This is the 2012 Portland Century 45 Mile Loop. We're starting the 45 mile loop after enjoying a delicious lunch put on by Chris King. As an extra bonus, you can practice your cyclocross skills on your way out. After wending your way through the Canby suburbs for about a mile, you have a short, steep, fast, fun little drop into the Malala River and Pudding River floodplain. After the initial 100 foot drop, you'll have about two miles of flat riding as you cross the floodplain. After you cross the Pudding River, there's a bit of a slog as you make the 100 foot climb out of the floodplain and onto French Prairie. Well, I won't sit here and watch the world spin by. You know, you know, people love. Just after mile four, you turn right onto Airport Road and enjoy a one mile easy descent down to Miley Road or you cross I-5. And just after crossing I-5, there's a fun little descent down to the Willamette River bottom. And here you begin a four mile flat but beautiful stretch on Butteville Road. Mile 11, you'll turn left and pass through Butteville. Butteville features the Butteville store, the oldest operating store in Oregon. It's a great place to stop for food or treats, especially if you're riding with the little ones on the trails that originate in Shampooey Park. Right after Butteville, there's a short, steep climb back up to French Prairie. Although it hits 18% grade, so it is steep, it is an easy climb. My kids had no problem with the climb back when they were riding 12-inch wheels. But maybe they were boosted by the magic of an ice cream from the Butteville General Store. And I'm remembering I was a wreck when we met the After a quick ride onto Shampooey Road, you'll continue a modest climb until you reach the high point of the loop which is only about 240 feet above sea level. I was Sorry about the picture haze. It was so humid on the day of the ride that my camera housing kept fogging up. I was over my head so I fled to the comfort of your charm. Just after mile 14, we'll pass by Shampooey Park, the birthplace of this beautiful state and a fantastic place to take kids. And just after the park, you'll turn left onto Shampooey Salem Road. This is a beautiful part of the ride, so flat that you'd think you were in Kansas. The only downside of the beautiful wide open vistas was fighting a really nasty crosswind out of the southwest. At mile 18, turn right onto St. Paul Highway and that nasty crosswind became a fierce headwind. This out of the saddle action is as much about the headwind as it is about climbing out of the creek bottom. Luckily, it was just two miles to the rest stop. As we leave the rest stop at mile 20, notice the mother and daughter team piloting a Haas Pinot semi-recumbent tandem. Semi-recumbents are a great way to ride. 
After about a mile of crosswinds on Highway 219, we turn left onto Davidson Road, where we're now pushed along by the winds that have plagued us all day. Picture postcard beauty of this stretch of the route even includes a view of the Cascade Range. And let's not forget the hops that make Oregon beer the best in the world. The right turn at mile 24 brings us back to St. Paul Highway. This time, however, with the wind at our back. But after three miles of flying the spinnaker, we turn right back into the crosswinds on Arbor Grove Road. Arbor Grove Road is part of the Willamette Valley Bikeway, which runs from Shampooey Park down to Eugene. The 132-mile Long Willamette Valley Scenic Bikeway is one of nine scenic bikeways scattered throughout the state. At mile 29, we turn east for a four-mile ride on Crosby Road. I linked up with a very fast pace line after turning left onto Boone's Ferry Road. After a mile or two at a torrid pace, common sense prevailed and I decided to ease back and just enjoy the eight-mile trek north. It's where good lawnmowers go when they die. A turf farm. Hundreds and hundreds of acres of the most beautiful lawn you'll ever see. It's like a dream. It's There's Aurora Airport off to the right. The last two miles of your trek north on Boone's Ferry Road are not exactly the most beautiful part of the ride. But happily at mile 40 you turn right onto Arndt Road with five miles left to go. Four miles left to go, you get a nice boost from the 100-foot drop back into the Pudding River, Malala River floodplain. Are you still there? It's been too long. Unfortunately, the two-mile trek across the floodplain ends with a short but steep climb back up to Canby. Here you'll climb up the 18% grade that gave you that thrilling drop at the beginning of the loop. But don't despair because after you reach the top there's just a mile to go before you are home. Thanks for watching.